Hello, welcome back. The title here is called Rapid Mental Multiplication Using the Distributive Property. This is part one. In the last lesson, we learned what the distributive property was and how to write it all out and how to use it. We are always gonna be doing that on pencil with pencil and paper as we go on in math, but here I'm going to show you how to apply the distributive property so that you can multiply numbers, larger numbers, in your mind, oftentimes, without even having to write it down. So it's kind of an application. That's what I really want to teach you. What if I ask you, tell me what three times 16 is? Now this is outside the boundary of multiplication tables. Most people do not know what three times 16 is because it's outside the, the, the 10 or the 12 multiplication tables. What I want you to do is, I want you to kind of in your mind rewrite it, right? You still have the three here and you're still multiplying, but this 16, I want you to change the way it looks in your mind. Instead of 16, I want you to think of it as 10 plus six. Now you notice what we have done. We have transformed the problem into what looks like a distribution problem because any two digit number, the first digit, it doesn't really mean one. The first digit really means 10. The second digit's in the one place, so it really does mean six. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this and we're gonna think about how can we do it a little faster in our mind. If we were to distribute this in, the three we get multiplied times the 10, so I'll write it as three times 10, the plus sign would come down and then the three would go and get multiplied times the six. Remember the di distribution happens to both uh, items, so we have three times six. Now you know that three times 10 is what, 30? And you know that three times uh, six is what, 18? And it's pretty easy to actually add 30 and 18 because you kind of start at 30 and you count up. You, you count up 10 more to 40, and then you have eight more, so 48. So you kind of start here and you count up. So 30, then 40, then 48. And so the answer is 48. So you can see as we've written it down that it really is a distribution problem, but what you have to train yourself is when you see multiplication of numbers, try not to think about the giant problem of three times 16, try to think of it as this is really a 10 plus a six in there. So in your mind, what you're really gonna do is you're gonna say, well, this times the 10 is 30, and then this times the, the six is, I'm sorry, the, the other, three times the 10 is 30, and then the three times the six is 18. Now you do have to hold both numbers in your mind the 30 and the 18, so it is a little difficult. It takes practice. But as if you can do that, then counting from 30, 18 more is just 40, and then 48, and then you can get the answer pretty easy there. So what I'd like to do is the first few problems, we're gonna do it this way, and then after the first couple of problems, we will start trying to calculate it in our mind, and then we'll write it down to verify our answer's correct. So I'm kind of getting you practice with the distribution property, but also getting you practice with a or useful way to use it. Let's say we have two times 24. A lot of people, most people do not know what two times 24 is. But in your mind, I don't want you to think about it as two times 24. I want you to think about it as two times the two represents really a 20. And it's really added to the four, which is really a four. So really it's two times the this right here. And then from distribution, the two times the 20 is what we're gonna do first. And then the plus sign comes from the inside and then the two times the four. So if we multiply the two times the 10, I think you all know is 40, and then we have plus the eight, and then you have 48. So the answer is 48, all right? So in your mind, again, when you're looking at this, don't think of this two as a two, think of it as 20. So you say 20, uh, two times 20, okay, that's 40. And then this is gonna give me eight, and then together is 48, boom, the answer is 48. We're gonna do one more where we write it all out first, and then after that, we're gonna stop writing it out and try to calculate it in our mind first five times 19, uh, we of course don't think about it. I don't want you to think about it as five times 19. I want you to think about it as five times. This one really represents a 10. And then this nine of course represents a nine. This is what I want you to think about it representing. The distribution property means it's five times 10, right? The plus sign comes from the inside and then it's five times nine, right? That's what we learned before. The five times 10 is 50. And then the five times nine is 45. Now, yes, you have to juggle these in your mind, but it's easy to add them because you start at 50 and you go up by tens, 60, 70, 80, 90, that's the 40. So I'm at 90 and then the five is more is 95. So again, starting at 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then five, 95. Most people, if I say, hey, tell me what five times 19 is, they're not gonna be able to do that answer in their, in their mind, certainly. Uh, but this is something that you can use every day in order to get practice.
All right, next problem. Let's say we have nine times 13. All right, so rapidly, how would we do it? Well, this one is not really worth a one, it's really 10. So really this is 10 plus three here. And then really when we multiply the nine times 10, we really get 90. And then the nine times the three is really 27. So we do have to hold these numbers and we do have to add them. But the easier way to add them is to start here and count up by tens. So 90, then we have 100, then 110, then 117 because we added 20 and then we added seven. We got an answer of 117. Again, going up 100, 110, and then the seven, 117. All right, for this next one, let's try to do it in our minds. Let's say we have four times 23. What do we get? Well, four times, this is worth 20. So four times 20 is 80. And then four times three is 12. 80 and 12, 80 and 12. Just go up from 80, 92. So the answer is 92. We think the answer is 92, so let's put it right here, 92. Let's see if the answer is correct. What would you do? Well, you would say that this is four uh, times, this 23, we'll write it as 20 plus three. Then we multiply the four times 20, we get 80. And then the four times three is 12. We count up 90 and then two, 92. So yes, it was correct. And we got the answer without writing anything down. You know, I never really encourage people to do math in their mind, really. Because when you do calculations, especially with larger numbers, it's very difficult to hold it in your mind. But when you're doing a quick calculation, like I said, standing in line at the store, it's very, very helpful to get practice with this. So let's try it and see if we can do it for the next problem. Let's say we have six times 17. Let's just see if we can do it in our mind, right? So this is not worth a one. This is really worth a 10. Six times 10 is 60. All right, 60, right? Keep that in your mind, 60. Then six times seven, 42. So we have to do the 60 and then the 42. Let's go up from 60, 70, then 80, then 90, then 100, and then two because we had to add 42. So we got to 102. So let's think if this is right. We have six times, this is gonna be 10 plus seven. Then we multiply six times 10 is 60. And then the plus sign, then six times seven, 42. And we started here and counted up 70, 80, 90, 102. And the answer was 102. And that's what we got in our mind. So I encourage you to pause the video when I write it down, see if you can get it correct. If you don't, it's okay, it takes practice. Three times 18. Let's see if we can get it right. Three times, this is really 10, three times 10, 30. 30, keep that in your mind, 30. And then three times eight, 24. 30 and 24, let's go up. Okay, 30, starting at 30. Then 40, then 50, then four, 54. 54, right? Let's see if we can get the right answer here. Three times, this is worth 10 plus eight. We multiply three times 30 and we get 30. We multiply three times eight, we get 24. We start from 30 and go up 40, 50, four. And that's the right answer. And we got the right answer in our mind. All right, let's take a look at seven times 14. Most people don't know what seven times 14 is. Let's see if we can figure it out. Seven times 10, that's 70. Keep 70 in your mind. Seven times four, 28, 28. So 70 going up, 28, starting at 70. 80, 90, eight. Right, 98, we think the answer is 98. Let's check it out. We have seven times, this is really 10 plus four. Then distribute again, 10 times seven, or seven times 10 is 70, plus sign, seven times four, 28. And we go up, 80, 98, 98. That's what we got, and that's what we got in our mind, and so I think we're doing pretty good. Do not get discouraged if you can't do it in your mind though, because honestly, I'd really rather you write everything down. I'm just trying to give you an application of this that really you can use every day in your life. Five times 23, right? Five times 23. Let's see if we can figure this out. The five times, this is really worth 20. Five times 20. Five times 20 is 100. So hold 100 in your mind, 100. Then five times three is 15. So 100 plus 15 is what? 115, look at that, big number. We got the answer. Let's see if it's correct, five times. This is really 20 plus three, right? Then five times 20 is 100. And then five times three is 15. Of course, we can see it when we write it down that it is 115, so it is correct. And as you get more practice, you'll be able to do these in your mind. Of course, if the numbers get too big, you can't really do it, but for these, it's still very helpful. What about eight 
times 16. Let's see if we can get it in our mind. Eight times, this is worth 10. Eight times 10 is 80. Hold that in your mind, 80. Eight times six, 48. So we have to go 80 plus 48. So we go up from 80. So 90, 100, 110, 120, 120, then eight more, 128. 128. Let's see if this matches reality. Here we have eight times. This we're gonna write as 10 plus six. We multiply, we get an 80. We multiply, we get a 48. And then we go up 90, 100, 110, 120, 128. And that's it. That's the final answer. So in this lesson, we wanted to use the dis distributive property, but apply it to something that you can kind of use in your everyday life. And, and multiplication is something that we have to use all the time, all the time. And so if the numbers get beyond 12 times 12, most people just don't know how to do it without writing it down. That's okay, I, I write down things all the time. But oftentimes when I'm standing in line, need to calculate something quickly, if it's something of this size, you can do it in your mind using this and you're also practicing your distribu distributive property, which we will use greatly as we move down the line. So practice all of these, follow me on to the next lesson, we'll continue getting more practice with the distributive property.